So I want to go over some common scheme mistakes that crop up when you're trying to write list procedures or any type of procedure that works with lists. So the first common mistake is creating your lists incorrectly. And at first it may seem, well, that's a pretty easy thing to do. I know how to make a list. I can append or cons or whatever. But when you're working with a procedure, sometimes it's a little harder to see exactly what's going on. So let's see an example of this. So here I have a procedure called count up to, and that's going to count up to whatever X is. And you'll notice I cons the list up to X minus one with X. Now the structure of this is actually correct. But when I run this, you can see that I get this really horrible structure. And the reason for this is, is that remember cons is actually not a list procedure. It is a pair procedure. We can use it with lists. That's not a problem, but it requires the second parameter to be a list. Cons only creates a list if the second parameter is a list. Okay, so what if I make X a list? So now you see, I get this weird structure. And again, what's going on is I'm doing a cons. Now, if the second parameter is a list, I do get a list back. But notice, this is a list with two elements. The first element is this strange list here. And the reason is, whatever the first parameter is to your cons, that's going to become the first element of your list. It doesn't matter if that's a huge list or if it's a pair or if it's a string. No matter what it is, that first parameter will be the first element in the list that you're creating. So instead of a cons here, I want to use an append. And if I run this, you can see I get the list I would expect. So the second common mistake we see is a misplaced parentheses. So here you can actually see that I have a warning in my parentheses, but pause the video for a second and see if you can see what's wrong with this particular procedure. So you'll notice I have bad syntax in if, null, x, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's this. There's a bad syntax here. Now, one of the things that's really helpful that Dr. Rackett will do is it will tell you what's enclosed in the current parentheses you're clicking on. So if I click here, this is where the bad syntax is. This actually looks correct. I have an if and there's two cases. Now that second case is an if, but it seems that this part is okay. So now, what if I click here? Now this should give you the hint of what's wrong. There should not be a parentheses here. So if I take that away, notice there's still an error, but that's because I've taken away a closing parentheses, so I'm going to need to add one at the end to close everything. So now I'm able to run this and it works fine. Now one other trick, I'm going to add that back and I'll show you one other trick that sometimes works. Dr. Racket has some pretty nice formatting features. And if you take away this new line and then press enter, notice it moves this to the front because it's expecting this to be lined up with this if, since it's no longer part of that if structure. And that's something that sometimes is helpful when I have a syntax error that I can't figure out. And now notice if I remove the parentheses, and now if I remove this new line again, and again, it's just delete, enter, notice it gets lined up nicely. So that's another trick you can use to help you find that type of syntax error. So our next error that we're going to see is a useless form. And you may wonder, what's a useless form? I'm just calling it that because it's a form that scheme evaluates and then throws away the result to. So here we have a procedure called has an odd wrong, and that's because it's incorrect. And we are going to take a list as a procedure. We're going to check to see, is it null? Then we'll return false because if it's an empty list, it can't have an odd number in it. Then we're going to check to see if the car is odd. And if it is, we'll return true. Then we'll keep looking for an odd in the cutter. And then finally, if the car isn't odd, then we will look for an odd in the cutter. Now, there is a problem with this procedure structure as well, but I did this intentionally to show you that we're going to have something sort of odd going on here. So if I run this, you'll notice that this is false in both cases. Now list one and list two both contain an odd. So why does this return false in every case? Because notice here, I'm getting a true here. But what's happening is, is that if it's odd, we have this value true, but we also are making a recursive call. So we're gonna keep doing this recursive call until it's empty. Empty always returns false. Well, guess what? This is what gets returned from this form. What goes on here is irrelevant. I could put 100 in here and the code would work exactly the same. What I need to do is return true and then stop. And this is a case that can actually get you in a lot of different places. When you have a cond, anything you do here is ignored. Notice now this works. They both have odds, even though I have all these falses. It turns out that however many forms I have here, they all get ignored except for the last one. They all get evaluated, 
but only the last one is actually returned. And notice I still get the same result. It's evaluating all this stuff, but it's throwing away the value. The only thing it cares about is that last piece when I have a chain of forms. And there's a few places where that can happen. A cond is a really common one. It's one of the reasons I sometimes will use nested if statements, because an if statement, if you tried to do that, you would get an error like we saw above. But with a cond, you do have a little bit of freedom with the syntax that goes on right here. But again, remember, whatever I put in this little highlighted area, it's going to get ignored. It's only that last thing in the form for that particular case that's going to be evaluated. The last common scheme mistake we'll see in this video is trouble with parentheses. Whether it's in your code or your output, it's really common to see places where parentheses are in the wrong location. So here I have an example of some code where I have too many parentheses. Now what this procedure is supposed to do, it'll take a list. If the list is null, it returns an empty list. If it's a pair, then I'm going to duplicate the elements in the car. I'm going to duplicate the elements in the cutter and then return the appended list. So if I run this, you can see that I get application, not a procedure. So here, notice right here, I have this parentheses, but then I have another set of parentheses. And it's expecting the first thing in that parentheses to be a procedure, but it's not. The first thing in this, inside this parentheses is another set of parentheses. Unless this is something that returns a function, I don't need this set of parentheses. So I'm going to take these off and I'm going to make sure everything else lines up. And so that looks better. So now it's going to append and, and this should be a little better. So now I have another issue and you'll see here it says application, not a procedure. So here I have the list command and I'm making a list of two X's, whatever that parameter is. This is the case where it's not a pair. So I'm going to make a list of two of those elements and return that. But list evaluates whatever it's given. And here, this is a scheme form where it's expecti expecting to apply function x to parameter x. Well, what does that mean? Well, scheme doesn't know either, right? You'll notice it says not a procedure. Expected a procedure that can be applied to arguments given one. So what you would want to do here is take those parentheses off. And you'll notice now it does what you would expect. Another thing I could do if I wanted to have those parentheses there I could use quote and that says don't evaluate this and you'll notice I get the same thing except that it doesn't evaluate the X either. So we're going to need to use list here and now we get the output that we would expect. And you may wonder why don't I just duplicate it here? Well it turns out this function will work with a nested list. So if I do something like this, notice that this will go in and actually duplicate even the sublists. So now I'm going to fix up this code and I'll post it on GitHub. So I'll put in the original mistakes. Remember we did cons here and I will comment that out just so if you're looking at the source file, you see what mistakes we did fix. Okay, so I think that should do it. I think I've added back all the original mistakes with comments that say what that mistake was. So you can try these on your own just so you have some experience seeing them, assuming of course you haven't seen them before, which probably you have. So hopefully this video helps you avoid some of the mistakes that are common in Scheme.